coming up today on the Danny Mac Bet Rivers podcast. What does Brian Erlacher think of the Jaden Daniels Hail Mary and the way the Bears defended or didn't defend the commanders in the final moments? Lack will join me in just a couple of minutes. I want to remind all of you who bet on college and pro football that you can do it with the same game parlay at Bet Rivers to earn squares. And with those squares, you can get profit boosts, bonus bets, and jackpots up to $10,000. Do it today. Wager on same game parlays with Bet Rivers and earn squares and lots of good stuff coming your way. You're now watching the Danny Mac podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. I guess you could call it a crisis. Not the first of the year for the Bears, but this deep into the season after Sunday's lackluster date in their week eight loss. A lot of people are wondering what in the heck is going on with Team Eberflus. Brian Erlacher is a guy who understands Bears drama and all things Bears, and he gets to watch as a fan when he's not watching his beloved Cowboys. When he's not on the golf course. How are you, Lack? Good to have you, man. Yeah, I'm doing good. Tough Football's been tough this year. Tough it's to watch. been a weird start for the Bears, and I, 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 we should have seen this coming after they had nice days against Carolina and Jacksonville that they still had a ways to go. And I know you liked DeAndre Swift before the year started. Once they got him yeah. rolling, things were easier for Caleb Williams. But Sunday was a fire drill against Washington. It was terrible. I didn't watch the game. Obviously, I saw the end. I didn't see the game. I, I, thought, I would think I was playing golf that day. But you're going to have those games. a road game. Uh, Redskins are a good football team. You know, I think you saw, obviously, they, they don't give up. But, um yeah, they're a good football team. Well, they six and two now, and the Bears they competed. You know, they were, there was they didn't give up a touchdown until late in the game there. But you're going to have those games. You got to. I, I don't like to call it winning ugly because there's no such thing as an ugly win. But I'll take ugly win over ugly loss all day. Uh, they had a chance to pull it out there. I just couldn't make the play during the game. Always a way to endear myself to Lovey Smith. Start a question by asking about an, an ugly win. Um, an ugly, yeah, ugly. Yeah. Oh man. What are you I guarantee we all take those ugly. ugly you'd have taken an ugly win too last week, by the way, if, if that's what you want to call it. No kidding, and it it, it would have been that for for fans because they wanted more of Caleb Williams. But Doug Kramer, the young backup offensive lineman, got the ball on fourth and goal from the one and a half, and he never received the football. That's late in the oh. game. They worked their asses off to cut it to a one-score differential. It's 12-7. to seven. And in the final moments, they give the ball to a guard who Offensive never – Offensive lineman. Yeah. I mean, it's well, just they like, I'm sure they – you know they practice it. <laughs> I hope so. I hope they practice <laughs> they it, and I hope they run it when they're up 37-3 on somebody like the Bears did when Fridge got the ball in the Super Bowl. When Super Bowl, were. yeah. Oh, I didn't see that play either. So that I saw they had <laughs> – Four, third or fourth and goal there in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden the Redskins had the ball. I was yeah. so confused. So I, obviously a turnover, a stop on fourth down. Oh, so they give it to a lineman and he fumbled. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine oh. the aftermath this week. And then there was, there was a lot of stuff that was misrepresented by the head coach when he addressed questions this week. And I, I don't want to get into all of it, but it seems like there are different messages coming from key players on the team as to how they were supposed to handle the Hail Mary that beat them. Uh, let's let's talk about the difference 12 or 13 yards make before that sling into the end zone. Where you, you put your corners, yeah, he, he probably doesn't get it there, right? If they run, if they put the corners in the flats and discard the sideline, game's over, right? They didn't they guard the, the boundary. Up. They got 13 yeah. yards and then mm -hmm. the, the flukish, and it was flukish. But they earned the fluke opportunity by completing that 13-yard out route. Well, the fluke was no one did their job on the on the Hail Mary. I, I don't know how – I'm not sure how it's coached now, but I know when, when I played, we worked on it every Saturday. You you would do the Hail Mary play. The offense would do their – where every guy's supposed to go. And then the defense, we would all line up where we'd have our three jumpers. I was the middle jumper. We had two side jumpers. And you, everyone else boxes somebody out. There's not five guys from one team when we did it jumping up trying to knock the ball down because – only one guy's going to get the highest jumper is probably going to get it. And then the other guy's got to figure out where the ball's going, which is like if you, I think if I watched it correctly, there was five bears jumping to try and knock that ball down. Right? Yeah. Five of them. Yeah. I don't think that's how they practice it. I'm not sure. I'm sure Coach Eberfus has it a little different than what the way they try to execute it. But you have three guys go up, 
try and bat it down, and then you have the rest of the guys boxing somebody out from the other team so they can't get in front of you and catch touchdowns, which is just what happened. You know, we, the same thing happened to us, by the way. In 2008 or nine. I, I go up and bat it backwards because we're not supposed to catch it. If you catch it, you get in big trouble, by the way. Huge trouble for catching it, which I wanted to do because I'd have had 10 more interceptions in my career. But um, you bat it, bat it down or bat it back. I batted it. And the running back sneaks in, catches it on the five, and sneaks into the end zone right before the half for a touchdown. They end up beating us ten to three. But you know, everyone's got to do their do their part. You got to box out, and you got to get the guys batted down, divide it down. Ten to three. That boy. How many? That 10 was the three? season Jake Jake got hurt that season, so it was frustrating. Uh, I'm Might have been. Trying to think of how many ten three games I've watched. Right after his uh, thumb injury, I think it was two weeks later. Uh, Maybe it was 2011 when it happened, but yeah, it was it was frustrating because it was 10 to three and the Hail Mary beat us in the first half. Yeah, the the guy who winds up catching the game winning pass, and I'm ready to get onto this week after this question about it. The tight end Noah Noah Brown, Noah there was Brown, nobody around him. Ex cowboy. Yes, he is an ex cowboy. That's one of the yes. reasons I wanted to mention. If you're a cowboy loving yep. ass. And but no one boxed him out to your point. Nobody was with him and it just fell into his hands. He never left he never left the ground. It just fell to him. Dan, they all jumped. Like I told you, you gotta have two or three guys assigned to jumping and batting the ball down, and everyone else boxes out. No one boxed out. They all went for the ball. I couldn't I didn't understand it. And then, you know, I saw it after after the fact that my phone started blowing. I was like, what hell what the hell just happened? Um this, this, no one, they, they, it didn't execute, you know. And then the bad thing is, of course, you go back and you see the number twenty nine running down, talking to the crowd. You know, I, I'm sure that's been addressed, but just you, you can't. And then if your guy's supposed to, and he, I think he took credit for not boxing the guy out, correct? At least he stood up and he's like, "That's my job. I was supposed to yes. box number eighty five out." Um, nice to say that, you know, you stood up and, and took accountability, but you got to you got to execute. You know, you have to do your job. I know he's he's a good football player. You know, that doesn't define who he is or type of player he is, but you got you got to take advantage of those plays and you get a chance to make them. He is a second-year player. He'll learn from it. I I, I like what I've yeah, seen so far. Yeah, he's a good football player. He's physical, but, you know, it's – the Bears, should, in my opinion, had no business winning that game in the first place. The, the way that, you know – and they put themselves in a position to win, and they just didn't take advantage of it. You know, it's, the wins and losses are hard to get in the NFL, and you kind of kind of piss one away there with the way that game ended. What does an athlete need – uh, you specifically don't don't speculate on teammates. What did you yeah. need when there was crisis from the head coach? Stability. You know, I, I, we needed our locker room. We, we had such you were around. Our locker room was so good. It, it didn't matter what was going on outside our locker room. We always knew. And I played for some great, in my opinion, great head coaches and assistant coaches. You know, Dick Duran was great. Greg Blosh was great. We kept everything in house, uh, and then you know, obviously moved on to Lovey. And um, Coach Babich, Coach Coach Rivera, Coach Marinelli. So everything was kept in house. When there was crisis outside, it was never inside. You know th- that never happened. You know the, there's always people trying to create division. You know how it goes with the media. They they want chaos is fun. It, it sells. I get it. But in, inside our locker room, it was never like that. Lovey wouldn't let it happen. Um, he said one thing to you guys, to the media, and another thing to us, which was great because we knew we could trust him and we knew he had our back. And I'm sure it's the same way in the locker room right now. Coach Eberflus might be saying something in the media, but I guarantee he's telling the player something else, which what he really believes. Yeah. I, you know, I want to ask you about the sensitivity toward media criticism. And before we got started, we talked briefly about social media and how guys oh. today have yeah. got to really, you know, put the blinders on and, and keep the earplugs in. I, I didn't yep. listen to a minute of it all week. I didn't want to hear any more of the drama, but how can it be where, because in Chicago, while, while, you know, those of us who have microphones and laptops can be tough, I think most athletes recognize we want our local teams to win. Why yeah. was the relationship as, as sometimes as challenging as it was with local Bears media and you and your teammates? So we didn't always win. That's a problem. <laughs> you know, when you're winning, it's easy. Dan. It's so easy when you're winning because everyone's positive. You know, you're trying to find things to pick on when, you, when you're not, when you're winning. But when you're not winning is when it really gets that, that I feel like there's more, I don't know, maybe more pressure or you're a little more irritated. Maybe that, that makes sense. But now with social media, these guys, you can't hide it all. You know, there's the fans are on you. If you have social media pages, the, you see every media, uh, good, bad, indifferent. You see their reports, you know, that people send it to you. It shows up there. But 
um, it's just it's just frustrating, especially because you want to win. Everybody wants to win. We prepare to win. We want to win. And when you don't execute, it's frustrating. And I think the media is the easy way to point, right? Like, yeah, it's their fault. They, you know, they, they shouldn't be, you know, you just feel like everyone's against you, I guess. Uh, it's very frustrating. Uh, growing up a little bit more now that I am, uh, looking back, I did some bonehead stuff. You know, it's hard when you're young because you want to rebel. You want to go against everyone. But you got to realize the media is there. You guys are the outlet to the fans. We have to realize that. Well, not so much now because social media, we can we can get to the fans without you guys. But back when I played, you guys were our link to the fans. But you don't realize that until you're, you're older. I thought you recovered from your PR hiccups. There, yeah, there were. You said bonehead things you did. Yeah, yeah. Go to, go to FoxSports.com. Would that be among them? When you did a news conference, and I think you said go to FoxSports.com 12 times. And oh, I have, no, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, just so long ago. But, yeah, you know, you, you're never going to win. I know that much. Uh, they're always, the media's always got the last say. So yeah. they're going to get the last word in. And you just can't win. Uh, but you, you, you live and you learn, right? But, yeah, I just uh, – the best thing is to try and get along with them, answer the questions, and, and just, you know, you know what the best thing, solution? Win. Yeah. That solves yeah. a lot of problems, too. No kidding. It, it really yes. does. You know, we have the Cardinals this week, and when we were talking about potential guest ideas last week, I said, yeah, we can probably get a guy who had a pretty nice game against the Cardinals that most Bears oh, yeah. fans will remember back in that was, I, I said, yeah, that's yeah. a good game. Yeah, I remember that one. That was, I, I thought, very similar to the 85 team, which, which beat up on Montana and San Francisco on the road to go to 6-0 and in 85. You guys go to 6-0 and with that 24-3, 23 win on Monday Night Football, and you eked it out. You didn't, you didn't have oh, the yeah. offense that team did. But the way you and Brown and, and Peanut Tillman willed your team to win in the second half made that, I think, the most memorable game of the season. And you can give, you can say it was a defense, but man, at halftime, Owen gave a speech, and Owen didn't say a whole lot to us. You know, uh, not a rah rah guy. Neither was I. We didn't. We had some guys that did that. If that motivated you, great. But it didn't motivate me. But Owen said some stuff at halftime, and I was like, "We're going to win this game." I think it was twenty three zero or twenty to zero at halftime, and then you know, Mark Anderson causes the fumble. Mike Brown scores. I think that he scored that touchdown with five seconds to go in the third quarter exactly. for our first touchdown of the game. And then, um, you know, I, the next series, I caused a fumble, peanut scores, and the Devin obviously runs back. But and, and in, at the end of the game, Neil Rackers misses a 37-yard field goal. Guy was perfect all season, misses a 37-yard field goal for him to win the game. But we just – we didn't believe that we were going to lose. You know, I think you get in those positions, and, and sometimes they go your way, sometimes they don't. But we did not believe – our head coach wouldn't let us believe we are going to lose, and Olin stepped in there as well. We just uh, – we, we could play the whole time, and we ended up finding a way to win. It was uh, it was an incredible game, and your memory of it is right on. I refreshed myself by taking a look at the box score, so I had to cheat. There were exactly five seconds <laughs> left in the third quarter. Third, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Mark Anderson, who was a rookie that year, he was kind of a one-hit wonder. He was one year, and then pretty much we didn't hear from him much, but he was a 12 contributor. 12 sacks his rookie year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was terrific, and that was a very short touchdown run for Brown. And then you ripped the ball away from Edger and James two series later. And that's what yeah. set up Nutty's Nutty's score. And then Hester with the 83-yard punt return. I mean, that was the recipe in 06. It well, I mean, well, but Rex, I think Rex had like 20-something touchdowns halfway through the season. Touchdown passes. You know, so it wasn't just defense. We played good defense. We we had some blowout guys. We beat up San Fran pretty good. We beat up Buffalo that good that year pretty good. Um, but yeah, that game was just that that's the way it went. And I'll watch that punt return every day for Devin. How the hell does he make those cuts? I mean, he's running full speed. It looks like his hips are on a swivel. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And you got the guys out there, you know, Amadeo's out there blocking. Remember Justin Gage out in front blocking. Just amazing how uh, everything fell into place. But, the, you know, Devin's rookie year was, was stupid, the things he could do. I was so happy with how he performed. And I'll call it a performance because that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Spoke it was. I, I was nervous, Lack, because I. For him I, to speak? Yes, I was, because I have a son who has a, a speech impairment. And when I okay. was ignorant to neurology and didn't understand it, I probably made fun of Devin Hester, too, years ago. But understanding yeah. more about how speech is a challenge for people, I was nervous. And he crushed it. And I was a great to job. me, it was a human victory to see him that confident. This is what yeah. football did for me, and this is what I've become. Here I am today. It was a great moment. It was really classy the way he did it and the way he handled it. Uh, 
just, you know, he deserved to be in there. You know, I, I didn't, it was disappointing. He didn't go in his first two tries, but we all know he was getting in, right? He's the best to ever do what he did. He had to get in eventually. He got in, and none of that matters now when you get in. When you're in there, you're in there. It doesn't matter when you get in. Uh, same way with Michael. Once you're in, you're in. doesn't matter. But, yeah, he did a great job. He's very classy. I like the way you know, the, the Lovey Smith shout-out was unbelievable. That's one thing in my speech I was so pissed off about. I didn't call out any of my coaches because I didn't have time. I was trying to get everybody from my family and friends in there and my, my teammates that I didn't want to single out coaches. And I, was, I look back at my speech, and I'm like, man, dude, you left out Coach Duran, Coach Babich, or not, Babich was my presenter. Or, I'm Coach Blosh, Coach Smith, Coach Marinelli, Coach Rivera, all, these, all your high school coaches, your college coaches. There was too many. I had, I had so many great coaches, I couldn't get them all in. So I just had them all stand up at once and recognize them that way, which sucked. But that's the way I had to do it for the timing versus for the, for the Hall of Fame. Well, I think that, you know, it, that it was on your mind says a lot about you. you. You felt that way about coaches and teammates. And you don't, you know, you're a Hall of Famer from several years ago. Now, you don't need mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, been an old guy like me to be six years. Buttocks. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was Jeez. lap number three at the score for me. Um, and uh, when I was sitting down to write this book I recently finished, I Bear Witness, I tried to ask myself, when it comes to the 10 or 12 biggest superstars in team history, when I write about them, what do I want to say that maybe hasn't been said already? And it was quite a challenge to describe Walter oh, Payton differently. Can imagine, yeah. And when I got to you, this is what I came up with. I have never seen a superstar in Chicago in any of the major sports who got off on watching his teammates succeed more than Brian Mm. Erlacher and who was more of a gentleman on the field after crushing somebody's soul Mm. by lifting them up to pick them up off the grass. I mean, you had the dark side switch that you could flip at the drop of a coin, but you were always grinning. You were the grinning assassin. And I don't think anybody enjoyed their teammates as a superstar. I mean, I didn't see it from yeah. Jordan. Didn't see it from a lot of other people and other guys. Uh, you were happier for your teammates and your coaches than you were for your own accomplishments sometimes, I thought. I did enjoy doing well myself, honestly. But, man, it's so nice. It's so gratifying to see your guys that you watch, watch bust their ass all week long or during training camp, especially the younger guys, the guys who were like the free agents we would keep on. Man, when they did well, there's nothing more satisfying. And that wasn't just me. Our whole team was like that as well, and our coaches. To see them do well was so gratifying and satisfying. Um, obviously, I like making plays. I like doing well. But it's so fun to see other guys who maybe shouldn't be in that position, and they busted their ass to get there. Not that I didn't. But once you make it, you, you're kind of in. So you see these guys breaking in, making plays, or it was preseason or whatever. It's fun. It's exciting, man. And that, that, I think that showed not just with me, but with our team. And the hitting thing, you know, Buck has gave me a, a shot one time saying that, you know, I don't like it when he helps guys up after he tackles them. I agree. I get it. I get it, man. I love Buckus, by the way. I, I'm so sad last year when he passed away. But um, I didn't, it doesn't, mean, doesn't mean I'm not going to hit you the next play. I can help you up and I can knock your dick in the dirt the next play just the same way. But I can still help you up and do the same thing to you the next play. Doesn't mean I'm not going to. Doesn't mean I like you. Doesn't mean anything. But I got no problem helping you up. That's just, that's just, just my mentality, I guess. I think that's upbringing. You probably had a high school coach who probably insisted on sportsmanship. Yeah, and not so much. It's just, I mean, you're both down there. Shit, why not help him up? It's not a big deal. You know, you help <laughs> right. him up. You, you, I mean, and if you catch, if, but if you catch this pass again, I'm gonna hit you in the mouth again. Uh, it's not, it's not gonna affect my my ability on the next play to, to hit you again. So that, now nothing to do with that. But I mean, I got no problem. I, my son's the same way. He helps somebody. Else. I got no problem with that. I think that's the way it should be. And when I see guys do it on TV now, I think, I'm like, hell yeah, good job, dude. Way to help that guy up. Doesn't mean. You're not going to hit him again next play, but you know what? doesn't hurt to help somebody up. Yeah, I agree. All right, give me a prediction. Bears and Cardinals this week. The Bears are slight favorites, and I'm I'm are staying they? away. I, I just yeah. – I'm tired of saying this is the week it happens. What happens? They're four the, and the, three. The, 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 yeah, I know, but this is the They're week we cover, this is the week where they go on the road and cover they, a number. They cover. Oh, yeah. yeah, favorites on the road. So, the, obviously, people think they're going to do – I didn't look at the line. Um. <sighs> something about the Cardinals, I don't like betting their games. So I, I love to bet, by the way. Something about their games, I won't touch. Because when they're dogs, I feel like they win. And when they're favored, they shit the bet. I don't understand it. Uh, and they're at home. They're coming off a big win at Miami last week. I, I, gosh, all the Bears got to do is win. I like the Bears. I think that – I'll take the – I'm, I'm going to go with the Bears. I just think 
after what they went through last week, there's going to be a fire lit, I, I believe, on some of those guys by the coaches or maybe the media criticism they've taken. And I think they're going to come out and play pretty well. Um, and plus, they're playing in a great. Gonna, there's going to be a lot of Bears fans at this game. Let me tell you, I know from playing at this stadium, and I know from living here that there are a lot of Bears fans here. I know there's a million people from Chicago in town this week. I've already seen them all. Uh, so I, I think the Bears are going to get it done this week. Maybe they win 28-27. <laughs> they, they cover, they, they push. How about that? How about for old times' sake, 24-23? 24-23, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that works for me. And we yeah, can have their place kicker. I, I don't know who it is, but they could find Neil Rackers of this year to hit an upright. Yeah, <laughs> missed one for us. Yeah, I just, I just think th- their defense is good, man. The Bears' defense is solid. They're going to keep them in every game, right? The, and you've seen that. Even when they played Houston, who I thought was a good football team, Close game. Uh, every game's been uh, really close unless they blow out like, like Jacksonville. But uh, they've been impressive. Uh, it's, it's, I think they've turned the corner from, you know, everyone's giving them a hard time. Still got a rookie quarterback. You know, you got to understand he, he's going to be some growing pains. There haven't been the last few weeks because he's played well and they ran the ball. But early on, there was, there was, well, there was some. That's just the way it goes. I will say this too. His, his growing pains weren't as bad as a lot of rookie quarterbacks' growing pains. They were minor compared to some of the things you've seen over the past few years with these guys getting in there that early. He addressed mm-hmm. a lot of them quickly. A little bit of regression yes. this past week, but he's getting rid of the ball a lot faster for the most part. Yeah, and he's so athletic, and he, he throws the ball great. I, I didn't realize how well he threw the football. Makes the checks at the line of scrimmage, you know, gets gets them in the right place. But running the ball is going to take care of a lot. Of Swift to get in the ball, Rashawn Johnson. How about Herbert can't even get on the field anymore? I know. Well, you got a, he's got an offensive lineman who grew up in the suburbs who is just screaming for goal line carries on fourth down. So, <laughs> Give me the ball. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? That was a bad Always play. fun catching up, right? Have a great weekend and bet yeah, smartly thanks. this weekend. I'm not betting. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate all right. it. It's Brian Erlacher. I want to thank Randy Merkin, who takes care of all of our A-list guests for this podcast. Sam Michael is our executive producer. Adam Delavan runs the show. For everybody at Bet Rivers Network and thanking Troy Mocker and our guy Alex Pastor for a job well done. I'm Dan McNeil, back after the Bears and Cardinals. About 15 minutes after the last dog is hung, I'll be here for you on the Danny Mac Podcast.